Microphone you can get closer to. Okay, we'll just put it a bit higher. Is that better? That's a bit better. Okay. Um, grants management office research, several areas of IT. Um, IT, I guess, peculiar to UNSW, but IT are constantly going through change. So we needed to be ensure, to ensure that what we were doing actually was very aligned with, with their shift as well. And a member of the group also is the university librarian and the director of digital library services. So that's what we started with, people. That the people actually needed from the top down, as well as the bottom up, you'll see in a moment, needed to actually govern um, the project and um, drive the infrastructure. So this is a simplified version of the infrastructure. Um, you can see the um, elements in it that are lit up, that are, that are highlighted in pink, green, and gray. These exist or will exist at the end of June when our um, project um, is completed. Most of them are in testing at the moment. So I'll go through them quickly, but what I'm going to do is demonstrate them through research use cases rather than through the infrastructure. Because coming back to people again, it's the researchers, and this is the bottom up approach to it. It's actually the researchers who are using the infrastructure. So we work it for them, um, not to make something pretty and clever. Um, I think it's quite pretty personally, but hey. Um, faculty based data systems on the bottom left, these were from the data capture project. And further projects are being developed as well um, in other areas of faculties at the university. Um, these can go directly into Fedora Mint which is our repository. Um, two along at the bottom is the data metadata deposit. This is simply the web-based deposit form to um, put RISDS records in. We um, grab metadata feeds um, in the management layer from the UNSW data warehouse. So um, grant and people information comes once a day for people. We actually get the same feed as the research publication system gets and grants information once a week. Um, as you can see on the right, there's lots of different ways of discovering this metadata. It's not just going to RDA, and that's to us it's really important that it's actually designed to serve lots of purposes for, um, for researchers um, and indeed for university administration. So the parts that are not highlighted are either not part of our project or not completed, or both. Um, they're future plans. So at the top, the storage layer, IT are working on this hopefully as we speak. Um, and along the bottom, research data management plan deposit, which you'll see in my research use cases. Um, the data deposit, data set deposit is part of the storage component and a reporting service. And I'll explain that as we go along as well. So getting back to people, and I promise this is the last um, of these ones. Um, this is who has area, who is responsible for the various areas within it. So um, whereas the UTAS presentation was talking a lot about um, external partnerships and um, working with other areas, we really have focused on embedding ourselves as much as possible within UNSW um, systems and infrastructure. So as you can see, we've got UN, uh, the IT area, Division of Finance and Operations are responsible for the warehouse, lots of faculties, 
Um, the vision of research at the bottom right um, is the research profile, the research gateway. Um, the next two should be part of the library, but there's sort of a um, blue line that didn't go away. Um, the institutional repository, which is UNS West, we link to the um, publication records. And the data discovery is going to be um, a user interface based on Fremo Libris software, um, which will make the um, Fedora Red um repository searchable. Um, and external um, responsibility there as well. Okay, so while we're on people, I'll um, just, I'm not going to show you pictures of anybody, but this is the team um, who have done a great job with it all, so yeah, I can take very little credit for any of this. Okay, so now, whoops, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to go to some research use cases. Okay. So I'm just going to walk through these. I mentioned before that this has been built for the people. It's been built for the, um, the people in the administrative areas who basically um, have provided infrastructure that sits around it um, for the researchers at the bottom end of it and for the team that I just displayed um, who actually created it. So I'll just walk you through the system by showing you how to use. This is a very common scenario. Um, you probably all read it by now. The researcher wanting to do something with their data, so help. So there's a couple of ways to get the data into Res Data. Um, metadata deposit, this is the web-based form, goes through a deposit service API. Or alternatively, it can be it can come straight from um, other systems. So um, the analytics center um, has had a project, AT Data, which was a data capture project. That metadata comes straight through to the Deposit Service API and um, is then integrated in Res Data with other records. Okay, um, a record is created in Res Data where it's assigned as a systems identifier. At this stage, it's a handle. It's linked to associated party and activity details from the UNSW Data Warehouse on the left there. The record is able to be expanded or edited by the researcher. So the data set metadata deposit is also an editing form. So um, people can go back once they see, or oh, they haven't seen it yet, it's not on the display. Um, but yeah, they can add to the record uh, or change things uh, with authentication. Okay, so the record can be displayed through the UNSW discovery interface, uh, which is the Primo one I mentioned, um, and Research Data Australia, and, and links to a researcher's research gateway profile. So that would be just a link, not an actual display of the record. It's kind of um, one of the things that underpins the design is that we, well, when we want things to be displayed in several places, we want to minimize the amount of um, sort of data entry, certainly, but duplication of effort overall. Okay, so step four the research can be uploaded and attached to a metadata record at the same time, research, research data, sorry, as the metadata record was created or at a later time. Additional data can be added and data styles replaced. So the one to fourth across from the left, the data set to data deposit in pink. Um, now this is, um, will go directly through to, or actually not directly, sorry, mediated by res data, um, the metadata, to research data storage, which is a responsibility of IT at the top there. So they'll basically take within the metadata record and res data, at the data storage service um, point, um, where it will then um, communicate with the storage. So information in the metadata record will assist the data storage service in determining where the data can be located, either locally or externally. So where IT are building a local data storage, external will include things like RDSI. So there may be something in the metadata that says, okay, this looks like an important data set. Have you thought about RDSI? Are you a candidate for that? Um, or any other number of, of data um, storage facilities. Um, okay, and the retention periods, of course, will be recorded and, and captured um, and to, will um, inform the data storage system about um, those issues. Okay, so that is the, the sort of the straightforward, um, well, not that straightforward, but that's a fairly common scenario about um, a metadata record that goes to Research Data Australia, um, but also um, data storage, um, all through using um, existing 
enterprise systems data from Julia, the data warehouse, um, and also we are putting in that data once, which can then be used and reused. Um, we're going to um, look at and extending the system whether we can actually send people off with their metadata um, to external storage as well. So um, I won't go into that in detail, but that's certainly on, on our um, work plan. So uh, this is uh, this doesn't exist yet. This is what we're going to do with it next. Um, I'm a researcher preparing to submit a grant proposal. I need to develop and submit a data management plan. How do I do that? And part two, at the end of the project, can I cite my data? So uh, we put together really two use cases in one in the interest of past money. So create a data management plan through the web interface. Second from the left there. Now we plan to create a number of templates based on particular needs. For example, um, probably the first thing we'll do here, uh, based on discussions with the graduate research school, is create some sort of a, a plan that's um, for new PhD students. So new um, postgrads um, isn't necessarily a requirement, but it'll be a possible way for them to actually think about and create a data management plan. So the researcher will be prompted for information that aligns with requirements of particular ground and project types as well. So if they happen to be going for an NSF grant, then we may um, in time have a template which actually aligns with that as well. So, okay, this is what these guys want. So, um, enter this metadata. Okay, when submitted, the data management plan will be managed in res data and will be used as a basis for subsequent data management activities for that project. Okay, so it's the same pop, the same fedora as uh, the metadata went into um, for the, the data set records. So, the, the rest of yes. So, you know, obviously we'll, we'll map um, various metadata schemes within it. If you already have a grant, this information will be available in the feed from Julia, um, the data warehouse, to res data, and you'll be able to link it to, Julia's a system, by the way, not a person. Um, you'll be able to link it to the data management plan. If the grant is subsequently awarded, you can link the grant details to the data management plan later. So, again, we're using existing um, metadata. Um, yeah, obviously, if the grant doesn't exist, they can create a record anyway. And if the grant doesn't exist in um, the data warehouse, so if it's a small faculty grant, um, the record may not exist in there, they can um, make a record up or create a new record. Uh, step four, a report of the data management plan can be exported through the reporting service. Okay, um, second from the right on the bottom there is a reporting service. Now this is a multifaceted beast. Um, we would like in time for it to um, enable people to actually construct a report based on any combination of metadata within Res data. Um, and this could include aggregate reports for heads of school, so perhaps they or deans if the dean of science wants um, information about all data sets from his faculty for the last five years. Um, then there will be a report that can generate that. Um, there will be a report if the graduate research school wants a particular um, report to be submitted for their PhD students, then um, that can be generated through the reporting service. So again, looking back, thinking back to the first slide with the, the membership of the board, we're taking our lead from the requirements that they're, um, they're giving us. Uh, okay, so once the researcher has collected data and is ready to publish, um, publish um, Research output publications um, here. A DOI for a data set can, can be requested as well. They could request one earlier, but this is the point at which we'll start to think about it. Um, the DOI is created through and site my data service and data site and allows the data set to be cited in the publication. Um, one of the features we've included with that is after they request the DOI, we're giving them from our system a 14 day cooling off period, if you like because once someone gets a DOI, it's supposed to be permanent, it's a fairly serious business, and we don't want uh, someone's supervisor coming along asking what they thought they were doing, um, uh, when in fact they've already got the DOI. Okay, um, next one. Publications containing DOI citations can be entered into UNS Works, the, the um, institutional uh, repository for research publications. 
The carbon patients records will be linked to the data set record in red data. Okay, that's the end of that one. Um, oh, that was a bit quick, wasn't it? Um, so that's basically what we're doing. Um, yeah. Um, I think importantly for us is that while it, the funding certainly came from ANS, and thank you very much, um, but the purpose of the project really is to establish um, infrastructure within the university that actually will be used because it fits in with existing and future systems that yeah, and, and to actually look at um, how it extends beyond storing that data and, and displaying this in the set side of Australia, which is a very integral part of the system. So that's it. Thank you very much, Maud. Um, <clears throat> I, I, again, I see if, wonder if there are any questions. Please use the chat box for that. Uh, but to start with, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Um, when you were talking about this at the um, uh, Sydney Round Table, um, you mentioned that dis discipline-specific metadata was one of your key challenges. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, um, that's on the future planning um, area as well. Um, what we want to do is map to metadata that is being used. For example, um, we're working quite closely with the uh, Company of Arts and Social Sciences, and I've actually been working over the years with people at the Australian what was the Social Science Data Archive and now Australian Data Archive um, about the possibility of getting um, metadata or data records, sorry, data sets from one of our research centres into um, Australian Data Archive. So we've been looking at CDI, which is the Data Documentation Initiative, and mapping that to uh, RIPCS. Um, what else is in there? Mods, mods, mods. Um, so that if people are using um, some sort of metadata schema for their data, that can be mapped to what's in the metadata records. Um, and I, I think I mentioned at the beginning the possibility of taking um, data, the metadata with them. So, for example, one thing I have been talking um, to a few people about is whether we can actually, or well, we can generate a report from res data, um, which generates XML or CSV file in CDI for um, records which in fact have, have CDI mapped to what's in Rosa, and that that could then be packaged um, and taken along to Australian Data Archive, for instance, with their data set. So rather than, again, capitalizing on the metadata that they've created already. Does that answer that? Yeah, that's great. Um, and I've got one more for you uh, before Lewis has a question for John. Um, and that is that when, uh, again, uh, I, I'm aware that at the University of New South Wales you've got a team of data librarians. I think you, you were t saying there were 10 of them at the moment. Um, can you talk a little about the, that sort of backup infrastructure that you're building? Data you know, outreach librarians rather than data librarians. So the, sorry, the what did you say? Outreach librarians rather than data librarians. Outreach librarians. Sorry, what did you say? Outreach librarians. Okay. So and faculty, it, like faculty liaison officers. That we call them outreach librarians. So okay, very much we're doing, your concept of, of mediated deposit and how they that what their role is in the mediation. Yeah, I'm not sure where the term mediated deposit came from. In the um, it wasn't mine, but I can work with it. Um, what we're doing is we're talking, we're developing a um, package of um, resources for the outreach librarians, where which they will then take out to um, the faculties. We're not doing that directly ourselves. Um, and so I guess by mediated deposit, um, that would involve the, the faculty librarians actually working with people within faculties to put metadata in. The system's designed for data entry from the faculties. The library is having a, a minimal role in doing that. Initially, of course, once we were rolling it out, and with early adopters who get a little more hand-holding than others will get, um, we will do a lot of work with them. But the plan is that um, the, data, the outreach librarians will be responsible for liaising with the faculties to get the metadata in. Um, and indeed, the Graduate Research School, um, we've been talking with them about, it, about um, contributing to their resources for the new postgraduate students. That's great. Thanks, Maud. Now, uh, Lewis has a question for John. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Lauren, John, and, and Lean, uh, I'm wondering whether you could talk a little more about two elements that I think are, are key from, from your project. One of them being that you've successfully established the relationships with uh, a research department in Utah that they, which is already uh, doing the research data management properly and they have systems in place where they're recording metadata and, and the system I think is, uh, is, is a geo network and, and how you are uh, working with them to get their metadata records into your institutional metadata store. And, and the other aspect that I think is, is also uh, interesting to the rest is that you, you have a, a vision on how you, you see the, the metadata stored activity developing in the future after the project. So I was wondering if you could just describe uh, these two aspects in, in a bit more detail. You sure, have I'll, to I'll hand over to, to Liv for the first one about the IMS and the, the geo networks, and then I'll cover up on the, the second point first. Um, so, when we started the project, IMS um, had done an earlier ANS project at a small at, at their scale. So they, they're a centre at UTAS, a discrete centre for marine and Antarctic studies, and they were quite mature and in their um, how they've gone with publishing metadata records. So when we came onto the project, they already had 241 re records published in RDA. So initially, I met with Peter on a few occasions, the data manager from IMS, to just get a feel of what they would like to do. And so he, just, he decided that he would really like to move his records when we have our established data repository through our, the institutional centralised repository store at UTES. So um, I guess the technical part Sue can probably explain, because they were pushing out to two data centres, the, is it the AODN, the Australian Oceanographic Data Network in a different schema, and also pushing out to RDA in RIBCS, um, with Sue, our technical um, officer on the project, has been working quite closely with um, IMAS to have set up um, an automatic um, harvest from their from their OIPA match point and import. Yeah, yeah, import into our uh, data hub. Yeah, yeah. So um, at the moment we're we're sort of halfway through that, and so Sue can probably comment on the more technical aspects. But what we hope to do is set up an automatic weekly harvest from the Marine and Antarctic Centre view, and it will pre-populate probably about 80% of the metadata elements straight into Redbox, and then data librarians will come in and um, just look at the you know, bibliographic accuracy and do all the party curations, activity curations, and the actual publishing to RDA. So we're really quite excited about that, and so is IMAS. So um, Sue can probably comment a bit of where we are at um, in terms of ensuring you know we get the right RIVs, yes, and the work that you've done on that. Yeah, because uh, uh, IMAS doing RIVs, RIVs, yes, a very long time ago, and the version is just 1.1. And at the moment, they are working on to upgrade the RIVCS file format to 1.4, which is suitable for our red box. And in that, uh, after they finish that, I uh, will try the first load into our red box and uh, uh, make, make sure everything could map correctly into our red box data hub. So we've done some tests, and it's yeah, the test was successfully, but just uh, eighty percent, as Ling said, eighty percent data map not over, and we try to um, improve the data quality and uh, maybe hundred percent if we could. So, <laughs> does that answer the question, Luis, or not really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, thanks, <laughs> Ling. For, for point two, which is the, the forward-looking stuff, um, I guess this comes about in trying to pin down um, the business owner for, for the Redbox solution as it was, and I, and I started thinking about, well, 
um, there are other things happening. When I went to the, the Red Box community day and a half, I called in on the, um, uh, the Vivo Research and Profiles conference on the way through, which was happening in Melbourne on the day I was traveling, so that was pretty convenient. And I saw the Vivo product there, and I'm thinking, well, UTAS does have a portal, and I'll use that word guardedly for its researchers, but um, when you see what Griffith are doing and University of Melbourne are doing in terms of the support of their researchers in, in uh, making their research or information uh, discoverable and accessible and then their outputs discoverable and accessible, uh, and then I'm looking what's happening in the UTAS space and thinking our systems are very stale. Is it possible in terms of when I'm searching for a, or trying to pin down the governance model and the business owner within UTAS for the continuing operation of the red box system that we should be looking more strategically and looking at some opportunities there where we, whereby we can put in place something that will um, uh, uh, replace our existing stale systems um, uh, and come up with a, a business structure which will uh, um, be, en enable that to happen. So um, I started talking with the librarian here. There's a, fortunately, there's a, there's a new person come on board within the research office who's taking a fresh start there. Uh, and I'm making suggestions to both of them that, that, that and, and I did a demonstration of the uh, the Griffith um, researcher portal for them, um, trying to trying to whet their appetite. And, and you can see people start sitting up very straight when they see what's happening in other areas um, and realizing the UTAS is perhaps falling behind. Um, certainly uh, the the head of oh, sorry the head oceanographer at IMAS who was very impressed with with what's happening in that space and and again wants to use. Um, the governance model that I set in place for the ongoing um, management of, of Redbox um, to also start to look at um, other systems as well. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I can't really say much more than that. That I've whetted people's appetites. They, they've seen what else is happening in other areas, uh, and they're looking to use this project as a springboard to make other things happen as well. Um, does that answer your question, Lewis? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, there's a question from Sh for Sh for Maud from Sharon. Um, I'm not sure if Sharon has a microphone. I'm going to. Un no, I can't. Before you do, the question, in case somebody is not aware of what the question is, um, a sh from Sharon at uh, UTS, uh, is that she's interested in that Maud is ta is taking the approach of mapping to DDI and pushing to ADA. A Yes, ADA, since DDI is so much more granular than RISC-CS. Are you anticipating a gap between metadata entered in RIS data and what ADA requires? Maud. Um, absolutely, there's a huge gap. Um, but as I said in the presentation, what we want to do is ensure that what researchers have done with RIS, in RIS data can be reused. So we're simply saying that, okay, if you've gone to the trouble of putting this much in, some of which is collected from the grant record itself through the data warehouse. Um, other metadata that they've put in, some of it may be from the grant application and may actually be from the project um, level, um, sorry, the, the more granular level. So um, to do with um, most of what we'll do with DDI is a study level variable. So the aim is simply that they take with them what's been done already rather than creating another record that looks the same but who knows, may or may not be. Does that answer your question, Sharon? Yep, that's great. 